If I could only ride one bike for the rest of my life, this is that bike. The BMC Road Machine 5. I love this thing. I've had it for almost a year. I've ridden across the state of Nevada, all of the Florida Keys, all the steepest streets in LA, San Diego, and San Francisco. 6,000 plus miles of ride. And I'm pretty close actually to the bike shop where I bought this bike. So it's got me feeling nostalgic. And I thought, why not try to talk while you're doing an interval? I'm sure my coach is gonna love that. We're gonna talk about bike specs. Then we'll go through the upgrades I've made. Then we'll talk about ride feel before and after the upgrades, what I love about the bike, and maybe, maybe even a thing or two I don't. Shocking. But first, I wanna thank this video's sponsor, Shocks. Working with select sponsors like Shocks allows me to continue making these videos and justify my purchases to my wife, Val. I purchased my own pair of Shocks way before this sponsorship, and I even recommended them in a video. These are the Shocks Open Run headphones. They're perfect for cycling, running, hiking, or even, like I'm doing today, listening to a podcast while unpacking my bike. See how you can see my entire ear? The Open Run are bone conduction headphones and transmit the sound by vibrations sent through your jawbone and around your ears. It is magical the first time you try it. This is a 6,500 mile review of this bike, but I've also been wearing these shocks for that long. I was gonna drop this and point at the shocks, but that would be a terrible idea. Let me just set this. Since I already have a pair of these, there's really only one thing to do with this new pair that I got. They make great gifts, and I'm going to use them as part of my ongoing mission to get my wife Val into cycling. Okay. Hi. I know we already like talked about this, but you gotta pretend that I'm giving you this gift. <gasps> <laughs> Headphones. Oh, there's no cord. Wait, how do I do it? Like that? Yeah. Like Arthur. Wait, do they go in? Or? No, they go over your ear. Oh, cool. So like while you're riding, That's you can hear everything. so different. Whoa. Wait, that's crazy. You want to like go on a bike ride right now? No. But. <laughs> Do you want me to say yeah? <laughs> <laughs> it like, really sounds amazing. Isn't it cool? Yeah. Yeah, it's surprisingly like crisp, huh? Are, like, I don't even use them anymore. Buy AirPods. <laughs> I didn't tell her to say that. Wait, can you talk on the phone? Yeah. It's like, like I can talk on the phone. Yeah, there's like a microphone. Nice. So, yeah. This yeah. is awesome. You can buy a pair for yourself or as a gift using the link in the description. And doing so helps me continue making these videos for you. Thank you, Shocks, for sponsoring this video. The 2022 BMC Road Machine 5 retails for $3,799. I bought it November of last year and immediately fell in love after only one test ride but I'm getting ahead of myself. We're talking specs. My road machine is a size 56. It came with Altegra 11 speed mechanical, Mavic open disc wheels, and Vittoria Rubino 28 mil tires. It had a compact chain ring, 5034 and an 1132 cassette. Really great for climbing and very useful when you're attacking super steep grades. I've ridden up 33% grades with this thing in that setup. The stock wheels and tires are nothing to write home about, but they are solid. It was not tubeless when I bought it, but you can convert the wheels to tubeless if you want to buy some tubeless tape, valves, and tires. The bike also has clearance for 33 millimeter tires. I have put 32 millimeter gravel kings on it and it still had room to spare. The listed weight is 8.3 kilos or 18.3 pounds. After adding bottle cages and power meter pedals, it was around 8.6 kilos, which is just under 19 pounds. I'm talking in the past tense, if you haven't noticed, because I made a lot of upgrades to this bike. The first upgrade was putting on the Favero Asioma power meter pedals. If you want an easy and accurate way to add power data to your ride, these are amazing. They're pricey, but look, you just spent four grand on a bike. I think you already know this is gonna get expensive. Next, I swapped out the saddle two times. First with the Physique Vento Argo, and then with the Physique Anteras Versus Evo Adaptive. What a mouthful. Man. Look, the stock Physique saddle was fine and completely functional, but I'm vigilant at protecting my asset. My recommendation is to find the saddle that works for you. Try a bunch out, see what works, put it on. The next thing I swapped out were the wheels. I bought the Scribe Arrow Wide 42D wheels and put some Michelin Power Cup tires on them. This is a huge upgrade because they're carbon wheels. I made a whole video about it. 
I love these wheels on this bike. We'll talk comfort and ride fill in a bit, but this combo, road machine plus carbon wheel and tubeless tires, oof, heaven. The stock wheels are great too. I still have them and I use them as my gravel wheel set. They're not super heavy and they're very durable. The shallow rim profile may not be as cool as the carbon rims, but I do find myself reaching for them on super windy days. There are two more big upgrades that I made, and at this point, you may be wondering, did Mitch replace everything on this bike? What's the point of this review? Do I need to buy everything he has? I didn't replace everything. I still have the original frame. I did replace the entire cockpit with the NV aero bars and stem, and I made the biggest upgrade of all. I replaced the entire drivetrain with Altegra DI2 12 speed. I went with a semi-compact 5236 chain ring, which pairs perfectly with the 1134 cassette. Like all of my other upgrades, I installed it myself, and it's chronicled in a video where I'm right on the edge of a meltdown. Okay, hear me out. This is the Rogue Machine 5, but now it's more like the Rogue Machine 1. If you want the Rogue Machine, but with basically all these upgrades I've made, like new carbon wheels, Altegra DI2, that's what you want to get. But why stop there? For even more money, you could get the Road Machine 015. Very confusing naming conventions, but it's a different bike. It's a higher quality carbon. It's got carbon rims. It's got Altegra DI2 and an integrated cockpit. My point is this. You can upgrade the specs however you like, or you can just purchase a more decked out version. But at the end of the day, you're getting a Road Machine. And I'm guessing, you want to know how it rides. Woo! The best. I mean... In my initial review video, I gushed about how compliant and comfortable the ride is. So it's been a couple days. Huge difference. I can't believe... I think at that point, like my longest ride ever was maybe 80 miles. Since then, I've taken this bike on a bunch of long rides, several imperial centuries with thousands of feet of climbing, and even back-to-back -back days of 150 plus miles. The second day was 190. So I feel like there's an extra layer of depth now when I say, this is a comfortable bike. Now, it is a performance road bike, so it's not cushy. And I'm still super sore after long days, but that's muscle soreness. It's not like soreness from being jostled about by every little micro bump in the road. This thing corners and descends like a champ. If you have an entry level bike and you wanna take your cornering to the next level, you will not regret getting a T-Machine. The geometry is a bit longer than race bikes, so that makes it agile but not squirrely. It feels confident in tight turns, or rather, it makes me feel confident. You just pick a line, look at it as you turn, and the thing just follows it. One of my proudest moments on this bike, I was helping Phil Guyman shoot a video for No Kid Hungry, and at the end of a descent, I'm following him all the way down, he says, and I quote, Is it all right? Thanks. Because the bike rides so smoothly, I felt confident enough to slowly push my limits and improve my handling skills. But don't mistake confidence for sluggishness. My very first impression of the bike was how zippy it is. Coming from an aluminum gravel bike, this thing felt like a rocket ship. Like I would push down on the pedal and boom. <sighs> I almost wish I could go back to that moment. It's not a mega light climbing bike. With all my upgrades, I did get it down to eight kilos, fully loaded with bottle cages, pedals, and the Wahoo mounted. So it is light enough to do the job well. I mean, you can technically climb with any bike, right? I'm just saying this thing won't hold you back. It's comfortable, confident, zippy, and versatile. Like I mentioned earlier, I recently put some gravel tires on the stock rims, and I've been testing it out on some gravel and fire roads here in LA. <laughs> BMC dubs the road machine a high-performance all-rounder, and I have to agree. I'm sure you already know, but I absolutely love this bike. However, there are some things I don't love. I love the color of the bike, it's highly visible, which is important on busy LA streets. I don't love all the chips and scratches I've caused to it. I loved the original drivetrain, and I really love the upgraded drivetrain. Electronic shifting is magical. I don't love that I've already scratched that up too. I love that this bike can take me up mountains and across deserts and down descents. I don't love... Wait, no, that's the end of the list. If I had to pick like a regret with this bike, it would be this. I do kind of always wonder, 
should I have gotten the team machine instead? That's a BMC's race-oriented bike. I got the road machine because I was going from a gravel bike. I didn't know if I wanted a race bike. Anything I've wanted to do, this bike has been up to the test. All the limitations have come down to me, my abilities, not the bike. Unless you're racing, this bike, I, look at that cornering. So unless you're racing, like, I don't know. You don't really need more of a bike, I don't think. If you want something comfortable, you want something that performs, this thing can do it all. I mean, there's always a wish list, right? I wish it were lighter, I wish it were more aerodynamic. Sounds like I want a race bike. And maybe I will get a race bike in the future, but right now, only a few years into my cycling journey, this is the perfect bike for me. It's fun to ride, it doesn't hold me back, and most importantly, this bike helps push me to become a better rider.